Welcome back uh, to another Through the Turnstile video. Today we're going to be going over the Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights. We're going to be going over our RIP tour experience and in addition to that just going over the event and all of the things that pertain to it. Let's just get into it. This year, Brian and I did the RIP tour at this event. With the RIP tour, you do need to check in 30 minutes prior. Get into the lounge, uh, very nice customer service. You get a lanyard and it says RIP tour. It's basically like your VIP badge for the event. So we waited just in the lounge, uh, enjoyed some of our complimentary water, just waited for our tour guide, Michael. Once we met up with our tour guide, Michael, the first thing on our itinerary list for the evening was the Moulin Rouge food buffet. Um, this is where we were going to have our dinner for the night. As you can see, there's a plethora of different food options ranging from various cheeses and salads and fruit uh, to a bunch of different themed foods that were available outside the park that we were able to enjoy here at the buffet. Uh, there was a meat carving station and there was a huge section of different Halloween themed desserts. There was also this bad boy with hot, fresh baked, delicious chocolate chip cookies. They did have complimentary fancy water, which was just water infused with different fruits. Uh, some lemonade, some coffee, some hot tea. So we met our tour guide, Michael. He took us down to where the studio tours are for the Terror Cham, uh, but only we didn't have to ride on those buses. We had our very own private VIP trolley that took us everywhere. And uh, how was that experience, Spencer? We immediately headed down to the back lot to go on Chucky and Universal Monsters Unmasked. After that, we went and did the Terror Trolley where uh, we went ahead and we went in in front of the tram that was incoming. So we actually got to walk through the most of Terror Tram uh, with no one in front of us. So we were getting like all the scares and then the tram people were behind us. So we were, it was, that was definitely a really cool like RIP only kind of thing. And then also on the terror tram, there was the RIP exclusive room. After that, we then headed to the lower lot, hit all of the mazes down there, including The Last of Us, The Exorcist, Believer, Holidays in Hell, and Stranger Things 4. We got to see Nintendo World basically empty, and then on top of that, we also got to ride the ride. We got to meet the characters who our tour guide said typically are like 30 minute lines to meet them and we met them with walk on lines. After that, we headed back up to the upper lot to go hit Evil Dead Rise and Monstros as our last mazes of the tour. And then we headed towards the first purge show of the night uh, at 10 p.m. Because we still had our tour guide, we were able to sit in a special reserved section of the purge show that was just for us. Um, so we didn't have to wait in any lines. We literally just walked in, sat down on our seats that were dead center. The show was amazing. Uh, this is the first year that they've had this show. Good story. It, it was a very good story. Um, if you're familiar with the purge, um, it's pretty much exactly like that. So after the show was done, unfortunately, we parted ways with our tour guide, Michael, who was the goat. Michael, if you're watching this, you're the goat. Thank you for being our tour guide and being awesome. So we were basically left with three and a half hours to explore the park again, do whatever mazes we wanted. This is our ranking of what our favorite mazes were. My number eight would be Monsters Unmasked. I usually like the monsters, the universal monster mazes, uh, but I was really let down by this one. I felt like it just was very crowded and packed and not very, it was just felt very blank. It didn't feel very full of life. And then my seventh place maze would be uh, The Exorcist. I felt very similar to how I felt about Universal Monsters on this one. It just kind of felt a little too samey throughout the entire maze. I felt like there were really only like a few scenes that stood out and everything else kind of felt uh, just like walking through the same hallways. My eighth pick was also Monsters Unmasked. Um, I had high hopes for this maze, but honestly, I don't even really remember most of it. It's that forgettable. My number seven was also Exorcist. Uh, I feel like Spencer and I's list is gonna match up pretty closely tonight. I just not a huge fan of the Exorcist 
branding. Um, I just don't find it appealing personally. My number six maze was Stranger Things 4. So they've done two other Stranger Things mazes before in the past and those ones weren't very good. The theming of it was great, but the mazes were short. There weren't a lot of scare moments in the maze. Um, the production value was really well, but the Stranger Thing mazes typically don't have a good track record. So I wasn't going into this maze thinking it was gonna be amazing. My number six as well is Stranger Things 4. Um, I was looking forward to this just because I really loved season four of the show and it was probably my favorite season of the show period. Um, but after we went through it, I just kind of felt I feel like it was the shortest maze of the night, and on top of that, it just felt more like a walkthrough than a scary, like, event house kind of vibe. It kind of, it just felt short, and it felt like that it needed a little bit more love to it. But the production value of it, like, there was, it was very cool, like, to see Vecna in real life. Other than that, there's not a lot of positives to the house. My number five is Holidays in Hell. I enjoyed this maze. I think after the last three, I feel like five to number one of my mazes are like pretty um, consistently like good or decent at least. I liked Holidays in Hell and I thought it was really fun going through all the different seasons. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I just think that I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the other houses. So for me, um, it, that's kind of why it stays in this number five. But it was scary. There were some good moments in it. And it was cool seeing like a evil Santa and all that. Yeah, my number five was Holidays in Hell as well. I think this was a really fun maze. Going through all the different holidays and just experiencing the, the spooky side to all of these, like Valentine's Day, Christmas, Easter, of course, Halloween, 4th of July. So production of it was pretty well done. I wouldn't say this is a maze that you would go to Halloween Horror Nights specifically for this maze, but it was a, a nice addition to the list of mazes that they had this year. My number four maze was The Last of Us. Uh, this one had a huge line. I didn't play the video game, so I'm not attached to this maze as much as everyone and their mom is. Um, I still enjoyed it. The theming of it was really cool. The, the scares were really cool. So my number four this year, we are, I think this is where we're gonna diversify our uh, choices for our mazes uh, or our houses as Universal calls them. Uh, but my number four is gonna be Chucky. Um, I thought that Chucky was done very well. Um, I thought that the production value, like I could tell that it probably next to The Last of Us had one of the higher production values of all the mazes because of all the animatronics. Um, but truthfully, Chucky wasn't scary. It was just really fun uh, and it was like a walkthrough. And uh, I mean, I enjoy the movies. So it was cool to see Chucky in real life and interacting with me as an animatronic. My number three is Evil Dead Rise. Um, I really enjoyed the movie this year and I was scared coming into the event because I know that they hadn't really promoted it until like a few weeks before the event started. Um, but I'm glad to report and say that this is my number three. This maze was awesome. Uh, there were a lot of great scares in here. Um, I think if you walked in here like without a group in front of you and you were getting all the scares, it would be even better. The scares in this maze were on point. The production was great. The, the makeup on the actors is phenomenal. It does kind of wear off a little bit towards the last like minute and a half or two minutes of the maze. Um, but besides that, it really sticks the landing. Plus it had a Stephanie. Yes, hold on. Let me go on a rant about Stephanie. I love Stephanie. I won't shut up about Stephanie. Ever since I watched this movie and I saw Stephanie, I was like, that's my favorite character in the movie, even though it's not a physical real life character that breathes. I was looking for it going into this maze and Stephanie is in the maze. I can confirm. Uh, and as I came out, I was, that was probably what I was most ecstatic about. And our tour guide, Michael, he was like, oh my gosh, yes. Like I was looking for Stephanie too. So there's a Stephanie fan club out there. 
Um, so if you're in the Staffany fan club, comment below and let me know so that I can know who the real Staffany fan club goers are. Secondly, I also have Evil Dead Rise as my number three. Um, Spencer pretty much said it all, so we're just gonna move to number two. My number two is 100% gonna be different than Spencer's because mine is Chucky. I think personally, what I like in a house was basically almost everything that this Chucky house had. The, the production for such a big IP in this maze was great. I think the, the creativeness behind capturing all the different scenes from a, a lot of the different Chucky movies and I think a little bit from the TV show um, was just really great. The way that they integrated the Chucky character into all these different spots. Um, spoiler alert, you will get wet in this maze. I won't say exactly where, but bring an umbrella or a raincoat or just use your friend to block it. I don't know, you do you. But it was very well done. I think it was this one was also a really fun maze. There weren't a lot of scary jump scares or like actors really in this one. So ex unless you're scared of a animatronic doll with orange hair and a knife, then like you're chilling. My number two, uh, very different from Brian here, uh, the Last of Us. I loved The Last of Us. Uh, I've also, I'm a big fan of the video game. I've played through the video game at least, the first one. Uh, I wanna say at least five times through the original uh, story. And I was very excited. This is my most anticipated maze uh, going into this event. And I'm happy to report that it was awesome. Um, it, it was super cool to see the clickers and the bloaters and all that. The production value is very high on this. I would say that this probably had the biggest production value next to Chucky as well when we were talking about, uh, when I was talking about Chucky. I loved seeing Joel and Ellie in real life. I loved feeling like I was gonna get my neck ripped out by a bloater. He got real close to me with his hand in the maze and I was a fan of that. It made me feel like I was in the game. We pretty much both have the same number one which would be Monstros, the monsters of Latin America. Yes, this maze was phenomenal. I think this had a very high production level. The scares were immaculate. The craftsmanship that just went into all of the areas of this house were just almost a near 10 out of 10. Uh, I can't even really think of anything that I would have changed about this maze. I think that this maze was phenomenal as well. I mean, it's both of our number ones. Uh, and I agree, like we did this one three times that night and this one was by far the best, I think. The scares were, it felt like it was always staffed well and I felt like I was always at least getting scared once by one of the scare actors because I don't typically get scared by them. But um, there, was, there was always like one that was right behind like a wall that I wasn't expecting to get me because it just got the guy in front of me, but he decided to pop out for me too, which I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And this is, I believe, the only maze with stilt walkers in it. And the stilts really do play well in this maze. Now we get to talk about Spencer's absolute favorite, Larry Larva and the Terror Tram. If, so I know I was just talking about Stephanie Fan Club. Uh, now we're gonna talk about the Larry Larva Fan Club. If you're in the Larry Larva Fan Club, like this video. Let us know that you're part of this fan club. Um, so the Terror Tram wasn't my favorite thing that we did at the event, but I definitely loved the Terror Tram. We got to do the RIP exclusive mini maze, which was essentially just like back-to-back -back scares for like 30 seconds. And the, honestly, that was super cool because we got to do it a second time where it was completely empty and we just got every scare hitting us and it was awesome. Um, but I loved it, especially getting the experience of like walking through the terror tram and no one in front of us, amazing. Um, although I do know terror tram is somewhat decisive because of People don't like it because it's not really scary and it's just kind of like this boring thing that you walk through. And if that's your opinion on it, you're not gonna like it this year if you didn't like it prior. Um, but it was still awesome. And then there also was the Jordan Peele section right at the end uh, before you leave. So 
is Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Hollywood worth going through the turnstile for? That is the ultimate question that is posed to us at the end of this video. And for me, I'm very in the middle. Uh, I think that there's so many positives and there's so, I think there are like a good amount of negatives that balance each other out. Um, I would say if you have the money to spend on this event and fork it out to get Express or RIP Tour, this event is 100% going through the turnstile for. Uh, you'll have fun, especially if you're doing RIP, you're gonna have so much time to do whatever you want, whatever your heart desires at this event. If you're getting a standard general admission ticket, you're going in with the expectation of maybe doing half the houses, and that's if you're focusing on doing the houses, and that's without early entry or anything like that. For me, uh, I would say it's worth it if you're paying the extra money, but if you're doing general admission, I would say it's up to you whether or not you wanna go and not do everything uh, in one night, that is. I would say that this event overall is worth going through the turnstile for, but by an inch. <laughs> so if this event continues to get bigger and bigger, that might change if they don't add scare zones and if they don't have better crowd management. This year in particular is a lot busier than past years have been. So I don't know if they're overselling tickets or if they're just very bad at managing crowds or there's just a lot more people want to do a lot more things and they don't have a lot of those things to fit those people in. I don't know, I'm not universal, but I would say that in general, as someone who's been going to Hollywood Horror Nights for probably the last six or seven years, I would say this year is still worth going through the turnstile. Even if you do have general admission, yeah, you might not be able to get through all the mazes, but as long as you hit the mazes that you are especially wanting to do, whether that be The Last of Us, Chucky, Evil Dead Rise, The Purge Show. If you like this video, make sure that you drop a like, hit that subscribe button, make sure to follow us on social media at Through the Turnstile. I'm Brian. I'm Spencer. And we'll see you next time.